It's not a Labour Party, it's a misnomer. It's a Tory party with a red rosette. The oligarchy in Britain loves the two-party system because it effectively controls both parties. So whoever wins an election, they win and their interests are protected. The Labour Party present themselves as the voice of workers, as the voice of labour. But what you saw when there was a genuine leader who was representing those people, the establishment within the Labour Party went to war with him and tried to stop him winning the 2017 election. And in 2017, Corbyn was a couple of thousand votes away from becoming Prime Minister. You've said each day I try and think of ways to undermine Jeremy Corbyn. I did say that, that, yes. Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Well, no, I wasn't alone. If he had your backing, he might have done a lot better. Well, he might have done. If the Labour Party had not been at war with him for two years, he would have won that election and we wouldn't have had Boris Johnson, we wouldn't have had the complete vandalism that they've enacted on British society, that wouldn't have happened. The Labour Party is part of the system, it's the liberal wing of the British establishment and that is its role. They exist to absorb and neutralise any kind of liberatory left. That goes for domestic policies in terms of nationalisations, anti-corporate policies, but it also goes for foreign policy as well. There's been a bipartisan consensus on foreign policy since the Second World War. Clement Attlee was involved in awful imperial crimes. Attlee launched a brutal colonial intervention in Malaya to shore up Britain's rubber interests. Harold Wilson, probably the most left Prime Minister Labour's ever had, was a key backer of the Nigerian junta when they were devastating Biafra in the late 60s, which was one of the worst crimes period. And he did that for British oil interests. And that's the left extreme of the Labour Party. The whole edifice that we have in the UK, in politics and media, is built on this idea that we have a adversarial political system, that Labour and Tories hate each other and believe different things and fight it out. When in fact, that's not true. That's pantomime. It's kabuki theatre for the plebs. It is two factions of the same establishment party who represent the same interests putting on a pantomime for people at large to give them the illusion of choice when in fact whoever they vote for is going to do the same thing and support the same interests. That's not to say there aren't some differences but they are the exception to the rule. In my lifetime I've never seen anything different apart from when Jeremy Corbyn came along in 2015 and we saw what the system did to him, it chewed him up. He lost the election in 2019, nearly three years ago, but the British establishment is still obsessed with him. Why are they obsessed with him? They need to not just destroy his chance of getting to power, they need to destroy the example he set. They need to destroy the hope that he created that things can be different because that is dangerous to them. Part of the reason was not his mild domestic reforms like a national education service or taxing the rich a little bit more. It was about his anti-imperialism. That is a red line for the British and American establishment. Corbyn throughout his whole career has supported liberation movements in Latin America, Africa, in the developing world. And he was a huge threat because the war state is a bipartisan issue. Labour, Tory, doesn't matter. They both support the US-UK imperial project. Corbyn disrupted that whole consensus. I find it deeply distasteful that the British Prime Minister can use the medieval powers of the royal prerogative to send young men and women to die. Why are we spending three and a half billion pounds on a war that nobody wants? when a quarter of the world's children die in poverty and starvation. And we say there isn't money sufficient for our own public services. We are inundated with stories about Russian influence in the UK, which does exist, but it's actually way down the list when you talk about foreign interference. The Americans are number one. America has 12,000 soldiers permanently stationed in Britain across 11 so-called RAF sites, potentially deploying nuclear weapons at RAF Lakenheath soon. These are huge issues which the establishment media won't touch because it is assumed that we are the 51st state and we don't have any sovereignty. The Americans and their external intelligence agency, the CIA, have always been concerned more with the left in Britain than the right. Back in the 1980s, they were very concerned about the advent of socialist politics in the Labour Party under the leadership of Michael Foote, who served from 1980 to 1983. And during this period, the US Embassy and various other characters in the UK devised a group called the British American Project, which would be aimed 
at bringing the left and the anti-imperialist left back into the orbit of the Americans and back into a pro-Atlanticist position. It still exists today and a large number of Keir Starmer's shadow ministers are members. Just last year, his senior shadow minister, Alison McGovern, joined the British American Project. Anna Sawa, the leader of Scottish Labour, joined in 2018. And what this organisation does is cultivate the left into pro-American positions. A significant number of British American Project members became critics of Corbyn's leadership, including people like Peter Mandelson. If we're ever gonna get liberation in Britain and actually become a sovereign country, we need to understand what role we perform for the Americans. The Labour Party operates as the liberal political wing of the British establishment. The liberal political establishment in Britain also has a media wing. They are called the New Statesman and the Guardian. Their role is to keep the political spectrum narrow, to keep people like Keir Starmer at the top of the Labour Party and keep Jeremy Corbyn at the margins. They went to war with Jeremy Corbyn from 2015 to 2019, particularly The Guardian, which was a key player in the anti-Semitism crisis propaganda campaign. Now The Guardian cries crocodile tears about all the policies that the Tories are enacting, but they were a key reason why the Tories got in in 2019 and that should never be forgotten. So we need to not only break the two-party hold on the political system, we need to break the hold of the establishment media on the media system. And that is happening in Britain through independent media. We're managing to circumvent it, but it's vital that people understand that The Guardian is not your friend. The leadership of the Labour Party under Corbyn did not understand the power of the forces that were reigned against them. And I think their tactic was to absorb the blows rather than fight back a lot of the time. Going forward, the left needs to understand that you can't break bread with people who desire your destruction. And many of the people that Corbyn invited back in after the 2016 chicken coup, they were still intent on destroying him. Right now, the lack of solidarity with Jeremy Corbyn is quite telling. The senior Labour figures on the left of the party need to understand that it won't stop with Corbyn. He's picking you off one by one. So you need to start fighting back and calling him out for what he is and what he's doing, which has not happened yet. There's this idea which is called Labourism, that the Labour Party is all important and everything else is ignored or marginalised. But in fact, our political system and our imagination needs to be much larger than the Labour Party. And I think a good way of understanding that is to look at the continent over the last two decades that has actually had successful liberation democratic socialist leaders, and that's Latin America. Nearly every single leader that has got into power, from Lula in Brazil, to Evo Morales in Bolivia, to Rafael Correa in Ecuador, has got into power by creating a new party, because they know that the traditional oligarchical left liberal parties are there to stop them getting into power. They are there to give the illusion of choice, the illusion that you can vote for a left or a right, but actually you're voting for the same thing. So they had to create their own parties and it was a long process. Lula stood five times before he was eventually elected and he created the Workers' Party in 1980. So I think either we need a new party or we need to make an assessment of how we bring about political change that is outside of the Westminster bubble. There's a lot of optimistic change and activism on the streets in Britain with Extinction Rebellion and other groups, but we need to broaden that and come to the conclusion that Westminster is not going to solve our problems. Organised labour is the major force for progressive change throughout history, and the trade union movement in Britain needs to disaffiliate from the Labour Party because if we can unhinge the power of organised labour from the Labour Party, then we have a whole reservoir of funds of people power that can really take on the British establishment and represent workers. The latest attack on Corbyn, it should galvanise the trade union movement to understand that they are not welcome in the Labour Party anymore unless they become part of the neoliberal Starmer project. A big hope I have is the energy that will be generated when people understand that the Labour Party is not the answer to our problems. There's a lot of energy still being put into the idea that we can make the Labour Party a vehicle for progressive change in Britain. I think that it's a vehicle for the opposite. So if we can get that energy and get that feeling and channel it into new vehicles, extra parliamentary movements, maybe new parties, whatever it is, we will have a groundswell of dissidents, a groundswell of goodwill and positive energy that we can use to take on the establishment. And that includes the Labour Party.
Nothing scares the establishment more than losing control of the narrative. And in Britain, they are losing control of the narrative because of the burgeoning independent media sector. So we need to grow it as much as we can and support those doing independent media and doing independent journalism. Support Double Down News on Patreon and go to the classifieduk.org to find out what your country is really doing in the world.